Welcome to the celebration week for the NC Oyster Trail. I came out this morning to sit next to a little bit of oyster reef and start the week off there and I'm hoping to get out every day this week and do a little video feature for you guys to kind of bring you up to speed on what the NC Oyster Trail is all about and how you can become involved in this new coastal initiative that seeks to really highlight the flavor and and the abundance and the beautifulness of these little critters down here in the water known as the oyster. It's low tide so the majority of them are up here out of the water and closed up and a lot of what you're seeing here are really just piles of oyster shells left behind by the oyster catchers that have huddled up over behind me here um, feeding in another section of the reef. This is a pretty substantial oyster reef. It starts uh, right here on this corner and kind of winds its way around. This is a natural oyster reef, not man-made version, just outside of Beaufort and part of the Rachel Carson Reserve. And there's the uh, oysters. I'll kind of zoom in so you guys can get a Each day this week, the NC Oyster Trail is going to be featuring a different uh, topic. Today's is history. And so with that in mind, I brought out a little visual aid to kind of give you something to look for on your bookshelves or your Kindle shelves or wherever you get your books these days. It's called The Big Oyster History on the Hash Shell. And it's uh, written by Mark Kurlansky. He is, um, he's an author who tends to merge uh, science and um, history together. He's the one that wrote The History of Salt, which talks about how a lot of the exploration of, of um, North America was following different types of uh, salt trails throughout the country. Uh, he does this one through Manhattan up in New York, hence the name History on the Half Shell and the Big Oyster title instead of the Big Apple. So he's, uh, he sort of chronicles the whole history of the development of Manhattan. And as well, he also, during that time, looks at what happened to the oyster industry in that area. It used to be a booming industry. Barges would line up around the base of Manhattan and people would come by to, to buy their oysters. His book discusses how large the oysters were back in the 1600s and stuff when some of the early explorers came through. Um, a lot of them uh, that came through Chesapeake Bay area as well had to navigate around huge masses of oyster rocks and oyster reefs. Um, John Smith notes that from some of his voyages in 1607 that there were so many oyster reefs they were having a hard time navigating through the Chesapeake Bay area. And then also Henry Hudson, uh, the guy known for circumnavigating the Americas, North and South America, using the Northwest Passage. Um, he also notes that when he first came into the, the harbor at New York in 1609, that it was hard to navigate around because of all the massive oyster reefs everywhere around the harbor. And that was the largest source of oysters worldwide at that time. Um, these guys, just see down here, um, go back way far, further than the dinosaurs. Some of the first fossil record we have of oyster shells goes back to 520 million years ago. That's during the Cambrian time period of the Paleozoic era. So these guys preceded dinosaurs. There was a major extinction event during the Permian period about 250 million years ago. And that was before dinosaurs, before mammals and all that sort of thing evolved. And it was a lot of shakeup in the marine life. The oysters actually survived that mass extinction and came back and actually flourished. They were bigger, they were more plentiful. One of the other really cool pieces of history surrounding the oyster are things known as midden piles. Midden piles are um, areas that where people were settled and they would dump the bones or the shells of whatever it was that they ate. And a lot of archaeologists like to dig through midden piles and do cores through midden piles just to look at the primary diet of our ancestors, you know, what they were actually living off of and what types of nutrients dominated their diet. So they go into these midden piles and this kind of looks like what a midden pile would be, but this would be an oyster, oyster catcher midden pile because these are shells left by them after they're through dabbing into all the little live ones down here. And that's, that's one of the things that they've looked at to see sizes of the shells, how they changed, um, the composition in the shells and how that has changed over time. So it gives them a lot of really good research about the past of a time that we were not around to, to understand these things. So I hope that you'll join me the rest of the week as we continue to explore the North Carolina Oyster Trail Initiative and look more deeply into the ecology, 
and culture and economy of these wonderful, marvelous bivalves.